so let's get on with our first case scenario so here is a 55 year old laborer who undergoes pneumonectomy because of a squamous cell carcinoma during surgery a few black nodes were identified in the hilum now patient is scc okay undergoes pneumonectomy so pneumonectomy so lung is removed one lung is removed along with the lymph nodes now lymph nodes are black in color okay lymph nodes are black and this black color could be possibly because of some pigment okay so pigment so what could be the pigment now the pigment could be carbon which is most common then it can be melanin coming from a melanoma or it could be hemosiderin coming from some hemorrhage okay so hemosiderin from hemorrhage melanin from some melanoma or some tumor or carbon from you can say from pollutants or from smoking okay it could be because of occupational also the patient or the uh, the case here is of a laborer so it could be occupational also okay so there are three pigments so which one fits most likely now patient is scc so melanoma is out there is no history of any hemorrhage or anything something like that happening in the lung so hemosiderin is out so what we are left with is the most common cause that is anthracosis and as the patient is a laborer it fits the clinical scenario so this pigmentation is most likely anthracosis so what could be the cause of this pigment it is carbon laden pigment name some other substances which are deposited in various tissue we will be discussing all this throughout this session now we move on to our next case scenario here is a 25 year old female so young female with history of tuberculosis and it was a nodal tuberculosis she was given att 2 years back now she presented with a hard node again in the same region okay on fnse some calcific material was obtained so let's analyze young female lymph node tb okay now we know tb can have caseous necrosis or that is the identifying feature plus granuloma okay so granuloma plus caseous necrosis and this necrosis can undergo dystrophic calcification okay so this dystrophic calcification is responsible for the hard node that is present in the same region probably the same caseous node has calcified and on fnse there is some calcific material so what could be the explanation for this calcific material the answer is dystrophic calcification and we will know details of dystrophic calcification in our subsequent discussion give some other examples of calcification one is dystrophic the other is metastatic okay details we will discuss then we move on to our third clinical scenario now here is a elderly male 83 year old male who died in a road traffic accident and was subjected for autopsy the patient did not have no cardiovascular complaints at all on hpe the following picture was appreciated so in the picture you can see here some golden brown kind of pigments okay golden brown pigments let's analyze the case and then we will come to the golden brown pigment so 83 year male so elderly road traffic accident died and then the heart shows some pigments okay now this pigments could be hemosiderin again okay hemosiderin pigment or it could be lipofuscin okay lipofuscin now lipofuscin why i am thinking because it is a elderly pigment and lipofuscin is known as the wear and tear pigment okay so this is normally deposited in 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 heart liver and certain other tissues and that is seen with old age okay so there are two possibilities but there is no cardiovascular abnormality so there is no chance of any hemorrhage and necrosis so hemosiderin is excluded or almost rule out so what are we left with we are left with lipofuscin so what could be the most possible diagnosis in this deposits the diagnosis is lipofuscin pigment 
Now the options are given here, it could be hemosiderin, lipofuscin, anthracotic pigments and melanin. We know melanin, anthracotic pigments, they cannot come in the heart. So they are excluded we, and I have discussed about hemosiderin and lipofuscin and how we have excluded hemosiderin. So we have taken up three clinical scenarios to set up this discussion. Now we will move on to our learning objectives. First, what are intracellular accumulations? Then we will know the location. Now accumulations can be nuclear, cytoplasmic, can be like extracellular. So we will see where they can be located. Then the mechanism of deposition or how they are deposited. Then examples of each subtype and this is very imp important because you get lot of MCQ or short note in relation to different subtypes of deposition. Then we will see some special stains to demonstrate this deposit. Again, this is very common for MCQ. What are the common deposits as well as what are the stains used to highlight each of these deposits. Okay, so let us move on to see what are accumulations. Now abnormal accumulations of material in cells or tissue any abnormal, normally we will not have deposit. For example, melanin is present in the skin, that is not abnormal. But if I have hemosiderin in the subcutaneous tissue, that is abnormal, okay. So abnormal accumulation of material in cells or in tissue. Now it could be intracellular or extracellular. If within the cytoplasm or nucleus, intracellular, if it is deposited outside in the vessel wall, then it is called as extracellular. Now these deposits could be harmless, they could just be there and cause no symptoms, no problem to the cell, but they could also propagate further cell injury, okay. Like say for example, fatty liver. Now fatty liver is because of alcohol, okay. Now alcohol causes fatty liver, if the person stops drinking, then this fatty liver will go back to normal. But if it is persistent or the person continues to drink alcohol, then this fatty liver may go steatosis, may go to steatohepatitis. Okay. See how this steatosis has progressed to steatohepatitis. So it can be harmless or it can cause further injury. And I have already explained that it is reversible to some extent. Some deposits are reversible, some are not and one of them is fatty liver which is reversible to some extent. Now what are the mechanism of accumulation or how these substances accumulate and why these substances accumulate. First inadequate removal and that the most common example is steatosis. Steatosis means fat. Okay. So if there is excess of fat in the body or patient is obese, there is diabetes mellitus, there is something called as metabolic syndrome. So there is chance of accumulation of fat and most commonly in the liver. So this is fatty liver and that is because of inadequate removal. Next is defect in folding, packaging and transportation. For example, there is alpha 1 antitrypsin deficiency which commonly results in lung one entity called as emphysema. It is associated with a disease called as emphysema. Now if they are defect in folding, packaging or transportation, they can neither reach the subcellular structure nor they can be destroyed or nor they can be digested. If they are not digested, they cannot be cleared. Okay, mostly they are cleared by the peroxism and here they cannot be cleared, so they will be accumulated in the cell. Failure to degrade. This is another subtype where because like lysosomal storage disease. Now in lysosomal storage disease due to deficiency of certain enzymes, what will happen? These uh, substances will not be degraded, so they will be stored in the lysosome and the example is Neiman's pick disease. Okay, Neiman's peak, couchers, these are some of the lysosomal storage disease. Then comes deposition of abnormal substance like silicosis, asbestosis, amyloidosis. Now silicosis and asbestosis are two occupational health related disease, okay, occupational. Now people working in sand industry, in mining industry, okay, uh, so in these kind of industry people are exposed to asbestosis and silicosis which can result in certain type of disease manifestation. So let us summarize there are four mechanism of accumulation and what are they? First is inadequate removal, defect in folding, packaging, 
third is failure to degrade like LSD, fourth is deposition of abnormal substance like silica, asbestos as well as amyloidosis. So this is the mechanism, then we will see what is the location where these substances can be deposited. This is again important from MCQ point of view. So the first is extracellular outside the cell. So what are the things that are deposited extracellular? It can be calcium, it can be amyloid, these are always extracellular, then it can be fat. The fat can be intracellular as well as extracellular, okay. So fat is extracellular. Then comes cytoplasm, see again steatosis means again something related to lipid, okay. Steatosis means lipid deposit. So here I have told fat is extracellular, fat can also be intracellular in the cytoplasm. Then there is hemosiderin derived from hemoglobin or you can say hemorrhage. There is melanin, there is cytokeratin. So cytokeratin is stored in the cytoplasm. Third is the nucleus, some deposits you can remember something like Dutcher bodies. Dutcher bodies are plasma cells, okay, plasma cells which have intranuclear inclusions. Intranuclear inclusions are nothing but the excess of abnormal immunoglobulins that are deposited, okay. So these deposits are forming inclusions inside the Dutcher bodies or in the plasma cells. Now comes the fourth compartment that is lysosome or within one of the cell organelle. Here it is within the cytoplasm, here it is within the lysosome. Like lysosome storage disease, I have already given example, Gaucher's disease, Neiman's peak disease, okay. So these are some of the lysosomal storage disease. So extracellular, cytoplasm, nucleus and lysosome, these are the four common sites of deposition in the cell compartments. After knowing the mechanism and the location, now we move on to specific substances. So the first and important is lipids. So this can again be a MCQ or it can be a short note, okay. So lipids can be in different forms. It can be in the form of triglycerides, it can be in the form of cholesterol or it can be in the form of phospholipids. Here cholesterol has been repeated or it can be triglyceride, cholesterol and phospholipids. Now the first form of deposit is steatosis. I have already told it is fatty change in the liver. Fatty change in the liver is called a steatosis and what is deposited in steatosis is triglycerides. Triglycerides are deposited in the liver. If you talk about steatosis or fatty liver, fatty liver can be because of two causes. Okay? One is alcoholic liver disease, one is non-alcoholic. Okay, here it is mainly because of alcohol which is a type of toxin to the liver causes cell injury and in non-alcoholic you have diabetes mellitus, you have metabolic syndrome, okay, you have obesity. So these are some factors that lead to non-alcoholic steatosis. Then comes cholesterols and esters, cholesterols and esters. So cholesterols and esters they are deposited like in the blood vessels, okay, atherosclerosis. Okay, in the blood vessels, in the intima and they can cause various manifestations which you all know. Then there can be xanthoma. Now xanthoma is foamy, okay, foamy macrophages. These foamy macrophages are deposited in the soft tissue and that is because of excess of cholesterol, okay. In hypercholesterolemia, in cholesterol or you can say in hypercholesterolemia, cholesterolemia, you can have tendon xanthomas as well as subcutaneous xanthomas. There is something called as cholesterolosis where cholesterol is deposited in the gallbladder mucosa and the gallbladder mucosa appears golden yellow or yellowish. I will be showing a picture of that. Then there is something called as Neiman's Pick disease which is a storage disorder. We have already discussed that it is a storage disorder or lysosomal storage disorder and there is deposit in the liver, okay. So this was about the lipids, then we will take a look at some of the images. Now this is a blood vessel and you can make out here some fat is there, some fibrosis or collagenous tissue is there as well as some macrophages. These macrophages are appreciated better in 
high power okay so for me macrophages are there so what does this tell you that in the intima there is atherosclerosis of iota this is a section from a larger vessel or iota which is a elastic artery if you do the and this fat how they can be demonstrated this fat can be demonstrated with the help of lipid stain and that is oil red o oil red o okay that's a lipid stain and that will highlight this fat that is present in these macrophages then comes cholesterolosis i told you in gallbladder lipids can be stored you can make out this yellowish thing they are all cholesterol and when we see such a gross thing we say it is cholesterolosis of gallbladder and if you take a section what you will see this is the lining mucosa okay the lining epithelium in the subepithelium you have a lot of foamy macrophages these macrophages are rich in cholesterol okay macrophages are rich in cholesterol then we go to our third example now this is a slice of liver which appears very yellowish okay which appears very yellowish and uh, it will be very firm in consistency and because this is enlarged and yellowish if you take a section from it it will show you macrovesicular as well as microvesicular steatosis okay deposition of triglyceride is called a steatosis whereas it can be micro and macro macro means one big vacuole okay micro means multiple small micro multiple small vacuoles so it is called as microvesicular and this is again oil red o okay so i am showing you these clinical images so that you remember this that fatty liver cholesterolosis you can find these kind of lipid deposits in various tissue now we move on to our second substance that is proteins again this can be a short note or mcg so proteins how they are deposited they will appear as rounded eosinophilic droplets or aggregates in the cytoplasm okay that will appear as clear cytoplasm okay lipids and glycogen will appear or glycogen will appear as clear cytoplasm okay they will appear as clear or vacuolated cytoplasm whereas your proteins will appear as eosinophilic droplets or aggregates now this deposits i have told you can be intracellular and extracellular so when these proteins are deposited in the intracellular where they will be deposited for example protein resorption droplets in pct pct means proximal convoluntary tubule okay in the kidney in the pct and which condition they will be deposited they will be deposited in condition where there is protein urea and you pretty well know which condition will have protein urea that is nephrotic syndrome and there are many causes under nephrotic syndrome which can lead to protein urea then comes your russell bodies now russell bodies are again plasma cells okay plasma cells we have two type of bodies one is russell bodies one is dutcher bodies dutcher bodies in the nucleus whereas russell body in the cytoplasm but both are what both are abnormal accumulation of immunoglobulins because in myeloma we know that immunoglobulins are abnormally secreted so they will accumulate and these are distended or these immunoglobulins will be distending the endoplasmic reticulum so they will appear as russell bodies and dutcher bodies dutcher bodies nuclear russell bodies cytoplasmic then i have already explained about alpha 1 antitrypsin it is because of misfolding of proteins and it can result in cirrhosis in liver liver cirrhosis and in lungs it can result in emphysema okay so these are conditions of alpha 1 antitrypsin deposition that was about intracellular and again in intracellular you can again have cytoskeletal proteins now this cytoskeletal proteins is important because you can get a mcq or you can get a short note in relation to this so there are five sub types of cytoskeletal proteins the first is keratin okay and keratin is deposited in the epithelial cells and they can be seen in alcoholic in the epithelial cells of liver and that is called as alcoholic hyaline okay alcoholic hyaline or mallory hyaline so keratin in the epithelial cells in the alcoholic it is called as alcoholic hyaline or mallory hyaline in the hepato 
sites. Now neurofilament is part of neurons and the neurofilaments you can find in neurofibrillary tangles and that is seen in Alzheimer's disease. Then comes glial. Glial cytoskeletal proteins are seen in astrocytes. You can have desmin which is seen in muscle cells. It can be skeletal muscle or it can be smooth muscle. You can have this desmin as a intermediate filament or cytoskeletal protein. The last is vimentin. Okay. Now, this vimentin serves as a IHC marker for mesenchymal tissue. Okay. So, all mesenchymal tissue will have vimentin as a protein and we can do a IHC against this vimentin to identify mesenchymal tissue. This was about the deposits and about proteins. Now, we will take a few examples to see. Dutcher bodies in plasma cells I have already explained. Then comes Mallory hyaline. This is liver biopsy and in alcoholics we have this deposit of this keratin in the cytoplasm. These are the keratin that is deposited, eosinophilic appearance and they are called as Mallory hyaline or alcoholic hyaline. Okay. They are seen in liver disease in case of alcoholics. Then comes your next that is neurofibrillary tangles and they are seen in Alzheimer's disease. That is a neurofilament and that is seen in Alzheimer's disease. Okay. This was about the intracellular protein. Okay. Intracellular protein. Now we will go ahead to extracellular protein and the most important extracellular protein is amyloidosis or deposition of amyloid. Now amyloid is a big topic that will be covered elsewhere but you must remember that it is also a type of protein or 95 percent of amyloid is protein so it is called so here it is classified under the deposition of protein then here what are the tissues where amyloid is deposited very common in kidney so you just know one or two conditions here but under amyloidosis it will be discussed in detail so here you can see nodular deposits of amyloid in the blood vessels okay and here in the glomerulus here again in the blood vessels also it is deposited. So, it starts in the blood vessels and glomerulus also you know it is made up of endothelial cells, okay, capillaries. So, amyloidus also or deposits are also seen in the glomerulus in the kidney. Now, amyloid can also be seen in the blood vessels here in the kidney or else it can be seen in other tissues also in the blood vessel. This is a splenic biopsy, okay, spleen, splenic section where this blood vessels are showing deposition of amyloid. So, with that we complete protein. Now, we move on to our next deposit that is glycogen. Okay. So, excessive intracellular deposition of glucose or glycosin. This is intracellular glucose or glycogen is called as glycogen storage disease. Now, I have already told you that it appears clear vacuoles in cytoplasm. Lipid and glycogen appear as clear cytoplasm or vacuolated cytoplasm. So, how do you differentiate them? Now, lipid stains with oil red O. We have to do this stain to highlight lipid whereas glycogen we can do a PS or per iodic acid skip. So, if we do this stain it will differentiate whether the deposit is lipid or the deposit is glycogen. Okay? Now, PS stain can be used for the demonstration of glycogen deposition is most commonly seen in the kidney and liver in diabetes mellitus. Now, diabetes mellitus we know there is excess of glucose, okay, excess of glucose due to lack of insulin, okay, or tissue resistance. So, excess of glucose can be seen in the kidney and liver in the form of vacuoles. Then comes your glycogen storage disease which we have discussed and it will be separately discussed under childhood storage disorders. So, let us have a look at the examples that is liver. Now, in this liver you can make out the cytoplasm appears very clear to vacuolated. Okay. So, we cannot know whether this is lipid or this is glycogen. So, we have to do a special state. Now, in muscle again muscle usually muscle cells will have a eosinophilic cytoplasm. Okay, eosinophilic cytoplasm. But here how does the cytoplasm appear? The cytoplasm appears vacuolated. So, there is deposit of glycogen and when this happens, something called as glycogen storage disease. 
glycogen storage disease which we will discuss in detail in other portions. So that was about glucose or glycogen. The next deposit is hyaline change. Hyaline change is deposition of plasma proteins or basement membrane like material most commonly in the blood vessel. So these are also proteins but they can be plasma proteins. They can be intracellular or extracellular deposits and you can say hyaline change is a morphologic marker of cell injury. Usually certain changes of cell injury we cannot appreciate in the light microscope. We can see cell injury or the changes morphological light micro you can say subtle changes under ultra structural or EM. But this is one of the indirect morphologic marker of cell injury. It appears as homogeneous glassy pink in HNE section. HNE means hematoxylin and eosin. Okay. Hematoxylin and eosin is a common stain used in histopathology. That is the commonest stain that we use in histopathology. It is hematoxylin and eosin. So it appears homogeneous glassy pink in HNE sections. Now it can again be intracellular hyaline and that is Russell bodies as well as alcoholic hyaline or it can be extracellular hyaline like hypertension and diabetes where you find this in the wall of the blood vessels. <music>